Grace and peace to each one of you this day. Amen. There's just nothing better than that, is there? Okay. We should just end our service right there. Okay. But I'm not taking a vote. We're not going to end the service there. It might be the better thing, but we're not doing it. Okay. Grace and peace to each one of you this day in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, life is a series of questions, I think. And there are a couple of questions that keep coming around all the time. Um, they might even be born in us, and they certainly come out at certain times. I think we start seeing them when we're about 10 or 12 years old. They start gaining an edge around 16 or 18, and they're definitely alive questions when we're 20 and 25. And this question keeps coming back again when we're 40 and when we're 60 and when we're 80. My 93-year-old mother asks this question, what's my purpose? It's a biblical question. And certainly the Bible provides a lot of answer for it. But I'm not going to the Bible right away. I'm going to a much more pop culture source. And this is going to date me. I didn't realize this until I looked it up. But I'm actually quoting from a movie from 1991, okay? Which still seems current to me, but it's hard to admit how long ago that was, okay? So the stars of this particular movie were Billy Crystal, um, Jack Palance, Daniel Stern, Bruno Kirby. Anybody know which movie this is? It's about three Manhattan yuppies who are going through a midlife crisis and they head out west and they meet a cowboy that Jack Palance plays. It's a movie called City Slickers, right? Okay, great movie. A little timeless, if I can defend myself just a little bit. The, the, the engine that drives this movie is the character played by Billy Crystal. His character, Mitch, is going through a 40-year-old life crisis. And he's wondering about his purpose. And one night, I believe around a campfire, this hard-bitten, throwback cowboy played by Jack Palance um, begins to engage in the question. Okay, the background of the story is these three Manhattan yuppieites, for whatever reason, decide to go to this dude ranch, but they get roped into, I mean, literally roped into um, going on a cattle drive, which is way more than any of them bargained for, right? And around the campfire comes this conversation between Curly the cowboy and Mitch, Billy Crystal's character. Curly says this, do you know what the secret of life is? And Mitch says, no, what? And Curly says, this. Mitch says, your finger? <laughs> Mitch says, no, one thing, just one thing. You stick to that and everything else doesn't mean anything. That's great, Mitch says, but what's the one thing? That's what you have to figure out, Curly says. Everybody is in pursuit of this question. Every reaching out we do for status, significance, money, is a search for meaning and purpose. It perhaps is the biblical question. I think the Bible does a couple of things. One, it teaches us who we are. It's an identity book. It teaches us what our purpose is as we join ourselves to the mission of Jesus Christ. And it reminds us how we're to live, okay? Two pieces of scripture today that I want to share with you that speak to this. It's from 1 Peter 3, ch chapter 3, verse 8 and following, and then from Romans, chapter 12, verse 1 and following. This particular translation of the Bible, if I can go off on a tangent for just a second, was, was um, um, rendered by a man named Eugene Peterson, who is a rock star in theological circles. I mean, a rock star, Okay. And it turned out about two years ago, my son Soren, who works at Flathead Lutheran Bible Camp in Montana, and whom I saw a week ago, and whom somebody in this family, Kathy, the other, okay, I can't bother to explain all of that in this without confusing everybody, but your first name is Chris. You were at Flathead just last week, took the train back here, like last night or something, right? Met my son Soren, who works, and part of his job is working on the high ropes. He's a facilitator for that, a safety officer. Anyway. Two or three years ago, one summer, Soren calls me from Flathead and says, Dad, he said, we, I forgot to tell you this, but we were having a dinner for all the neighbors of the camp here at Flathead. And he said, and I got to have lunch with this guy named Eugene Peterson. You wouldn't happen to know him, would you? Okay, that's like asking a guitar player if you know who Eric Clapton was or who Bono is or something, okay? Like, yes, I do. And he said, yeah, he lives right across the bay from us. Um, at the camp, and he's here all the time, and I've gotten to meet him and his wife, and they've invited me over to their house, and I'm thinking to myself, I know 10 people right now that would give their right arm um, to have this relationship with Eugene Peterson. 
Um, I went out to visit Soren a week ago. He asked me to be the camp pastor for a week. My subtext for the whole trip was to stalk Eugene Peterson, okay? <laughs> he wouldn't let me do it. He said, if Eugene Peterson comes to camp, fine, you can talk to him, but you are not to get in the canoe and go over there. So I didn't, okay? But Eugene Peterson gives life to these ancient texts in a way that few have ever been able to do in translation. And these two texts are first century Christian thought that's reflecting on what exactly is the one thing. Okay. It goes like this from 1 Peter chapter 3. Be agreeable, be sympathetic, be loving, be compassionate, be humble. That goes for all of you, no exceptions. No retaliation, no sharp tongue sarcasm, instead, bless. That's your job, bless. You'll be a blessing, you'll receive a blessing. Whoever wants to embrace life and see the day fill up with good, here's what you do. Say nothing evil or hurtful, snub evil, cultivate good, and run after peace for all your worth. God looks upon all of this with approval. From Romans chapter 12, verse 1. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going out to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embrace what God does for you, in you, through you. It's the best thing you can do for God. Beautiful words. What's the one thing? First century Christians, in their desire to follow in the way of Jesus, said similar things to these two texts. Be a blessing and be an offering. Be a blessing to everyone you meet, be an offering to God. The wisdom in this is awesome. That the way to peace is through peace. The way to find a great life is to give your life away for other people. The way to honor God is to take the things that God has given only you and love yourself so much, love the gifts that God has given you so much, invest in them so much that they just shine, okay? So small parenting note, right? I mean, how obvious is this? We know that Liz and Matthew are in for a lot of sleepless nights, okay? I'm sure the tally is already ratcheting up, okay? But eventually, instead of just midnight feedings, our wake-ups in the middle of the night are about our children's well-being, the decisions they're making, the people they're surrounded with, the world that is weighing down on them. And underneath all that, we ask ourselves, what is it that we should be doing? Not one of us ever got a manual when we got the baby. But it kind of comes down to these two things, right? Remind her to be a blessing everywhere she goes. And remind her to think well enough of the things that God has given her to use them with everything she's got and place herself as an offering before God. And in that, you avoid all sorts of stuff, don't you? You avoid all the selfish nonsense of this world of having to get because you're afraid you don't have enough because what you teach your child is you've been given everything you need. And by the way, you're beautiful. You're beautiful, perfect, just as you should be one of a kind. And it teaches you also that all that God wants for you is for you to just be yourself that you don't need to strive after becoming somebody different or somebody else with a different set of gifts. Instead, the most honoring thing you can do for God is to take all that you are, even when you feel like you're a hot mess, and just offer yourself up to God and say, here I am. And you know, God as parent is a tenuous analogy. But it makes sense in this regard to me that when we look at our children, all we see is perfection. And all we want for our children is to shine. It's no different for you and for me. 
God asks us to be a blessing. God asks us to be an offering. And we can do it. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.